Hello, I'm Jake Langsley, the Pondologist, and today I'd like to talk about buckthorn removal. I've been battling this since I moved in about five years ago, about 10 acres. A lot of it is uh, heavily infested with buckthorn. I also have a lot of nice old oak, hickory, and hackberry trees, so I feel kind of an obligation to help kind of free them from this uh, grip that they've been experiencing with the buckthorn. So I have a couple areas on my property that I've been a little bit more successful at trying to cut some of the buckthorn down and uh, was really inspired this year that I had a redheaded woodpecker that's overwintering and actually still is right now. See him every day hanging up in the old oak forest trees and I, I, I don't know, I could just be lucky, but I like to think that it had a part of me going in, taking out a lot of this buckthorn because I know that the from the redheaded recovery program in Minnesota that they noticed that the redheads don't really like a lot of understory and brush and stuff like that. I'm really inspired by that. It kind of gives me fuel of fire to get me out here and keep going at it. And uh, a couple other things that I kind of come across that's given me a little bit more, more motivation to get out there is the, the equipment. And this part here I like to talk about, which I love ever since I've been using it. First when I started out, just a little bit of history, putting a chainsaw out there, going around, bending down every time, cutting them off, taking a lopper, and the lopper always gets stuck. And it just it just was, was not fun and wasn't fast. So now I take a weed whip, you put this metal blade on here. I'd like to thank John's Bait and Tackle and Faribault here for turning me onto this. It's a solid metal blade, nine inch diameter with teeth of a, a chainsaw teeth riveted solid to it. So I can still file these off by hand with my, my uh, hand files that I use for my chainsaw. And what I like about this, I have it snapped in a holster. This whole thing goes around me, really nice and supportive. I can go hands free. And I also can just cut really low, and I really love is that I don't have to bend down. I can just go back and forth and cut, and this thing cuts, cuts very amazing. I can go up to these small ones and zip, they're off in a second, and I have some footage of that. Some of the bigger ones you have to work at a little bit, but it, it tackles them and all the way up to six, eight inches. So it's just a, a great system so far for me. Also they got the hard hat here, they fall down and slap you in the face, so protection there, ear protection. And I also put my cell phone in my pocket with earphones up and then listen to some tunes while out there. Kind of get some uh, kind of some nice music just while I'm going out there just slashing the buckthorn. It just kind of keeps me going and keeps my mind into it. So those kind of things have helped me. Just a good way to get outside in the winter here in Minnesota. We're always looking for ways to keep our heart rate up, stay fit and active in the winter time. It's just a great time to tackle it. And uh, then in the summertime, you can be concentrating on all the pretty flowers and other plantings and other stuff in your yard. So this is a great time. And another part of it is that you're able to wear really thick clothing, really bust through some of that thick, sharp thorns and brush, and, uh, and, and do a little disturbance to the forest floor because everything's kind of frozen up and has an icy grip on it right now. All right, it's winter time. This is the coolest setup i found for cutting bigger buckthorn. It's a weed whip with a uh, tooth blade. And I'm gonna cut down this big old buckthorn behind me. This is a big old, it's got all kinds of berries on it. A female tree putting a lot, a lot of seed. And um, it's just a great feeling to hack one of these invasives down, especially when they're big and as old as this. You know they've done a lot of damage. So it's about time I get my payback. <laughs> When I'm going, I'm not cutting every buckthorn. I'm just first starting on the big ones, especially the ones with seeds, the female plants, to try to stop the seed cycle. So I usually go for ones that are about an inch and larger, a lot of times two inches. And if I'm going in place to place and I see some smaller ones, I'll smack them. But I don't really, you get too bogged down if you try to get all of them. 
at one time. So the goal here is we're going to cut all these down. I'm working methodically through my woods, cutting out the big ones. And then this summer, the big wave here is we're going to put in some goats here to work on the understory. So some of these older ones, these bigger, taller ones, have been doing some research last fall. And they can get up pretty high, you know, six, eight feet, but they can get really high on some of these. Some of my buckthorn are over 20 feet tall. So as I cut these down, they're gonna have, they're gonna re-sprout again, and be nice and low, just at that chest height that those goats can nail them at. So I really feel uh, I have some new motivation, just knowing to that I can have uh, have these goats come in and kind of help me with this, because the big ones I don't really have a problem with. It's just the small, tiny little seedlings that really get old. I think I go crazy just trying to get them all. I just imagine going out to a a big, huge football field full of dandelions and just picking them all up by yourself without any spray. It's, you know, you go crazy. And that's another thing. I'm really going for not using any sprays on this. I know traditional methods and, and up to this point really had to use spray. After you cut off the stump, you treat the stump and use some herbicides and stuff to kill them. But I'm really concerned about not uh, putting extra chemicals, say, in the, in the woods and also with the goats. I know they're coming back. The, it, early this spring to start working on them, I just don't think it's going to be the best for them. So really going without the, uh, the chemical mode here is going to be the first season actually trying this combination. All right, this is the biggest buckthorn I've come across so far. Massive berries everywhere. I'm going to take great pride in taking this boy down. Actually, it's a girl because it has seeds. You see the diameter of the, the base of that, it's probably the one side that is close to six, eight inches, and then about three other trunks that are about three inches in diameter. Let's do this. Just chopped it down, throw out the old trusty weed whip with a nice blade on there. I'd like to figure out how old this stump is. Try to get something up here for comparison. A few goats on leads here, just playing around. Really probably wouldn't do this on a large scale, but just so I have a, a long rope on each one so I can catch them. But just notice that even when they do tangle the rope around the trees, they're still eating down to the last drop. They prefer the tips of the branches, the more tender shoots, but also notice that they really like to seem to pick at the uh, berries or the seeds too as well. Thanks again for joining me on this video. I'm really pumped to share some of these tips with others and just really network and connect with others that are working on it. I think a lot of us, I don't care where you live in Minnesota, if you live in the country and you have a woods, anywhere there's light and, and soil right now, buckthorn are slowly making their creep and some areas they've totally just choked out everything. So I think we're hopefully starting to reach a turning point here that the, uh, some of the other people I know, uh, some friends in Wisconsin that have had some good success with using these goats on buckthorn, it's just trying to get the application, get the people out there, get the knowledge out there, and just refining the system so that we can really use these uh, goats to do some real, real good for our environment. I think up until this point, from what I've seen, you kind of clear an area, say myself or a group, and you just look across the path and just notice the, the woods just solidly infested and you just kind of feel like, there's never going to be a turning point and I hope these goats now are going to be that turning point. We're out there battling and now we've got say 50, 60, 100, 200 goats in certain large tracks. Just bring them in, bam, just totally wipe out the area like goat napalm just taking them out. So I think maybe we can kind of get to the point where we can start putting this buckthorn back in its place, get some of our natives going, our native species from the understory all the way up to the bird life. So. I hope uh, you'll join me on this journey and that, uh, like I said, if you ever have any questions or comments, I'd love to talk about this topic with you and share it with others. Thank you.